Hey Math 43, I wanted to take a look at a bonus deep dive to help you prep for your um, second deep dive coming out of chapter four. If, if this problem seems familiar to you, and I'm hoping you've read through it at this point, um, this was the same setup that we had in chapter four, example 18. And I asked a bunch of questions that had this setup, and I wanna ask slightly different ones here. And if you read through this problem, a couple of the buzzwords that pop out is this phrase here, right? We're keeping track of the number that believes same-sex couples have the right to legally marry. And if you're wondering of number of who, well, right here, it says we're going to randomly pick eight first-time, full-time freshmen for our survey. So we're going to go find these eight freshmen at random, and we're going to ask them, hey, what's your your beliefs on same-sex couples having the right to marry. And we're gonna keep track of the number that say yes. So my variable here is the number of freshmen in my sample of eight, right? And I can put, I'll just put this in parentheses, in my sample of eight who believe same-sex couples have the right to legally marry. All right, so I've got that. Now, this type of variable, it's discrete. We are in chapter four, but it's discrete and it's numerical. And if we think about a table that I could make, I'm not actually gonna make it, but if I wanted to think about that table, all right, I would have a bunch of columns, right? I'd go zero, one person could say yes, two, all the way up to all eight of the folks in my survey could say yes, they support same-sex marriage. Okay, that's great. I could make that table, but imagine the, the tree diagram that goes with it. So I'm gonna check if this thing's binomial first. And I do have a fixed number of trials. I can call a success by the way they set this up is if a freshman replies yes, right? Yes, I believe same-sex couples have the right to legally marry. So I'm gonna put replies yes. I can assume that these trials are independent and the reason I can do that is because these students are getting picked at random. So I have no reason to believe that one person's opinion on whether or not same-sex couples have the right to marry legally, that shouldn't affect the next person in my sample. All right, and then they told us here that 71.3% of freshmen across the U.S. believe that same-sex couples have the right to legally marry, and we're just going to check this out now for, for our school. Okay, so with this, since I can check all of these off, I can say x is distributed binomially. We've got an 8 here and a 0.713 for the probability of success. Now, all of this is working up to, oops, how do you get the mean and standard deviation? Well, the mean in binomial land, we have that formula. It's n times p. And for the standard deviation, we have a different formula. It's the square root of n p 1 minus p. Well, I literally am just going to plug in my number. So I'm going to get 8 times 0.713 here, all right? And then for the standard deviation, I'm gonna plug in n, I'm sorry, eight and 0.713 again. So we've got eight times 0.713 times one minus 0.713. And when I crunch those numbers in my calculator, I am looking at 5.704, and here I am looking at 1.279. And the units on this are students, or you could write freshmen, so what that's saying is when we talk to eight students, we think about 5.7 of them are going to be in favor of same-sex couples having the right to legally marry. And I know that you can't have exactly 5.7. It would either be 5 or 6 or 7. But on average, if we repeated this again and again, we would get 5.704. All right, so with that being said, let's look at B. It says calculate the probability. So I see that buzzword of probability that the number of freshmen who reply yes is less than the mean. Okay, well, if we go back to part A, here was my mean. So let's make that sentence into a probability statement. So I need capital P with some stuff in parentheses. All right, the number of freshmen who reply yes is my variable. All right, I have this less than here from that phrase. And then the mean was 5.704. Okay, now keeping in mind my sample space, let me write it over here. It was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 five, six, seven, eight, right? That would have been the top row on my PDF table if I made one. 
And I want to start inside the parentheses and think about which x values are less than 5.704. So 0 is, 1 is, 2 is, 3, 4, 5, and then I run out. All right, 6 is not less than the mean, 7 is not less than the mean, and 8 is not less than the mean. So really what this problem is asking me is saying, hey, what's the probability that x is less than or equal to 5? All right, since my discrete numerical variable has to be a whole number, even though the mean here is at 5.704, I'm really looking from 5 on down. Now, I have a binomial variable, and I have a button for less than or equal to. I have a direct button for that. We have binomial CDF. So the quickest way to do this would be to say, hey, let me get the binomial CDF, and we're going to go 8, 0.713 and then 5. And when I crunch that number on my calculator, I would get 0.415. Okay? Now, if you wanted to do it slightly longer, and I, I personally wouldn't do this, you could calculate all the PDFs. I could say, hey, this is the probability that x is 0, plus 1, plus 2, all the way up. Oops, let me rewrite that to the probability that x is 5. All right, and you could then go binomial PDF of 8.7130, and then add another binomial PDF of 8.7131, and keep adding that until you get to 5. I'm going to run out of room. I'm going to put it here, 8.7135. But you can see it takes a long time to write and even longer to calculate. And I'm not going to do all that because I have this direct calculator button with binomial CDF. So anytime you have a less than or equal to, you can run the CDF. All right, if you have, oops, let me get a different color. If you have the equals to, you need the binomial PDF. All right, so let's keep on moving. This says, what's the probability that the number of freshmen who reply yes is within two standard deviations of the mean. Well, let's just remind ourselves our mean was 5.704 and our standard deviation was 1.279. So let's find these values that are within two standard deviations of the mean. So let me take my mean and let me add two standard deviations to it. And let me take my mean and subtract two standard deviations from it. And when I do this, I get 8.262. And when I do this one, I get 3.146. And so these are my boundaries. These are the values that are within two standard deviations of the mean. So this problem is saying, hey, what's the probability that the number of freshmen who say yes is within two standard deviations of the mean? Now, again, admittedly, these numbers here, they're decimals. So we need to figure out which numbers in our sample space line up with that. So let's, let's do that over here. So again, if I was going to think about my sample space, oops, that's not how you write a comma. It's 0 to 8. Oops, I can't even go 0 to 8. Let me just do these. There we go. Let's see which numbers in there fit in this band. All right, so if I'm thinking about 3.416 is my lower bound, all right, 0 is not between 3.416 and 8.262, 1 isn't, 2 isn't, 3 isn't, 4 is, 5 is, 6 is, 7 is, and 8 is. So these five numbers fit inside that description. Okay, so let's go clear this up a little bit. Let me erase some of this stuff here. Oops, I erased the 6. And then I think I can get this erased. There we go. All right, so as I work through this, this is going to be the probability that x is 4 or 5 or 6. And you hear me with the or. I just keep adding. I add those probabilities like we did in Chapter 3. I would subtract for any overlap, but there is no overlap. All right, so I could run through and do five binomial PDFs. So I could do the binomial PDF for 4 and add to it 5, 6, 7, and then end at 8. All right, that would be fine. That would be 5 PDFs. Personally, what I'm thinking, though, is if I think about my numbers as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and I want 4 on up. 
I do not want three on down, so I'm gonna use the complement rule. I'm gonna say this is one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to three. And the reason I wanna do that is because I have a direct button for less than or equal to, and it's one calculator command. So I do one minus binomial CDF, and then I do 8.713 and three, and I crunch that and I get 95%, which just FYI, this is pretty much in line with the normal distribution. We haven't quite gotten there, or you, you might have um, tagged into the chapter six videos at this point, but about 95% of observations um, are within two standard deviations of the mean. All right, so there's your, your bonus deep dive. I hope it helped.